Good evening, everyone. I am Carmen Cho, the VSB Board Chair, and I would like to call this meeting to order and acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations, and that these nations continue to thrive on these lands as we work in partnership for public education. This meeting is being live streamed and the audio and visual recording will be available to the public for viewing after the meeting. The footage of the meeting may be viewed inside and outside of Canada. June is National Indigenous History Month. The realities of residential schools are difficult truths Indigenous peoples have faced and known for decades, and truth about which others are now just beginning to hear and acknowledge. Feeling hopeful about the future may be hard right now, but a number of schools across the district have been highlighting and honouring Indigenous brilliance. Here are just a few examples of what has been happening in our schools this month. An Indigenous education worker at Roberts Elementary invited a community member, Benny George, of the Cowichan Nation to lead students in singing and drumming to honour the 215 children found in Kamloops and to honour residential school survivors. Benny has made outdoor visits and shared Indigenous healing songs with students every school day in June. At Lord Bing Secondary, a ceremony was held where carver Dave Robinson gifted a healing carving called the Whale to the school. Musqueam Elder Shane Point attended the ceremony and discussed the healing aspects of cedar and transformation of both the school and community culture. A workshop on anti-racism was recently held at Britannia Secondary with Elder Larry Grant of the Musqueam Nation and Howard Grant, also of the Musqueam Nation, where students were able to hear the lived experience of growing up biracial and maintaining roots within Musqueam and Chinese communities. At Norma Rose Point Elementary, the district's Indigenous Education Department was invited to speak to students each day over a week to share their own gifts and teachings from their nations. This is just a snapshot of the ways students have been listening, learning, and engaging this month. Today, on National Indigenous Peoples Day, Drums Across Canada, a virtual collective sharing of voices through song, was led by the Indigenous Education Department. We want to thank the Indigenous Education Department for their incredible, tireless work, both on this event and throughout the entire school year supporting Indigenous families and communities. Your dedication to students and your guidance as we work towards more compassionate schools that are free of discrimination is recognized and so greatly appreciated. As a board and district, we remain committed to continued learning to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action and to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. Today, we mark the second anniversary of the raising of the reconciliation poll and two welcome figures that stand on the lawn of the Vancouver School District. They pay homage to all Indigenous nations in Canada and are a reminder of the district's commitment to the First Peoples. And they honour truth and reconciliation. They were a vision received by Indigenous education teacher Davida Marsden. Western red cedar logs, each between 300 and 500 years old, were used. And six Indigenous artists worked to transform them into symbols that serve as reminders of strength, connection, and welcome for visitors to the unceded Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh land, on which they will stand for generations to come. I would also like to acknowledge the shock and heartbreak after a family was killed in London, Ontario, believed by police to have been targeted because of their Muslim faith. We stand and mourn with the Muslim community. This incident demonstrates there is still much work to do to ensure everyone feels safe in their communities, free to be who they are and to practice their religion without fear. There is no place for discrimination in our schools. The district recently began an engagement process which will help shape an anti-racism and non-discrimination framework. As a board, we strive and will continue to strive to ensure every individual feels welcomed, accepted, and valued. Schools have also been marking Pride Month. The district has been preparing its submission to this year's virtual Pride Parade, which will happen in August. 
and schools have been setting up displays with flags, banners, messages of kindness, and lots of color. We are committed to schools that are inclusive of all. With the help of SOGI123 and other resources, we will continue the important work to get there. Thank you all for allowing me to share some of those district highlights with you. It is our board's responsibility to ensure that our board meetings are conducted in a safe and respectful manner. There is a link provided on the website for any questions to be submitted to the public question period, which is item 10 on the agenda. The link will remain active until immediately following the committee reports. In the room with me this evening, we have Vice Chair Estralita Gonzalez, Trustee Barb Parrott, Superintendent Suzanne Hoffman, Secretary Treasurer David Green, Deputy Superintendent David Nelson, Associate Superintendent Carmen Batista. All other trustees, senior management and staff will be attending by teams and I will now take roll call. Trustee Ballantyne. Present Chair. Trustee Chan Pedley. Present Chair, thank you. Trustee Fraser. Present, thank you Chair. Trustee Hansen. Present Chair. Trustee Reddy. Present. Trustee Wong. Present Chair, thank you. Student Trustee Ricky Wang. Present Chair. Associate Superintendent Pedro De Silva. Present Chair. Associate Superintendent Jody Langwa. Present Chair. Associate Superintendent Rob Schindel. Present Chair. And Assistant Secretary Treasurer Shazad Samji. Present Chair. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? No. Okay. I will now ask our Associate Superintendent Jody Langwa to introduce the program highlights for this evening. Thank you, Chair. For tonight's presentation, it's my great pleasure to have our District Principal for Indigenous Education, Chaz Desjardins, introduce the group that will be presenting tonight and say a few words about them. So, Chaz, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for that introduction. Um, I'd like uh, to begin um, by acknowledging um, the intergenerational Indigenous brilliance that has been taking place uh, not only this month or this day, but every day of the year. Um, as Morgan Guerin of the Musqueam Nation reminded me today uh, in ceremony at Prince of Wales. And with that, um, I'd like to um, start with a short video that acknowledges uh, the loss of the 215 children um, at the Cam Kamloops Indian Residential School. And we know that this is just the, the beginning of uh, Canada's reckoning. Um, so if that video could be played, we are going to uh, have two minutes and 15 seconds of silence.
Thank you for playing that. Um, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, the schools and most importantly, I'd like to thank all the children across the VSB who um, came together to, to show that they care, that every child matters. Um, raise my hands to those young ones who are leading us into the future. And I am hopeful as many of the messages that you saw come across the, the screen. Um, I'm hopeful for the future. Um, it's not an easy future ahead. The journey is a long one um, and especially painful for Indigenous peoples because we know that this is uh, just the beginning. So my hands are raised to all those schools, those students for doing that work, for showing support uh, for Indigenous uh, communities and nations and families. And on that note, um, I would like to continue to um, shine light on really good work that has been done uh, this month. Um, and I'd like uh, to uh, introduce uh, teacher uh, Stacy uh, McEachran, who is going to talk about um, a workshop that was attended and led by Eric Camber secondary students. Um, and the workshop was titled Born Into Activists, where we had um, Musqueam um, members and Tsleil-Waututh members uh, come and do a virtual workshop with us. So I'm going to pass it over now to uh, Stacy McEachern. Thank you, Chaz. I'd like to acknowledge how grateful I am to live, work, and teach on the unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and the Tsleil-Waututh peoples. My name is Stacy McEachern. I teach BC First Peoples 12 social justice 12 and junior social studies classes at Eric Hamber Secondary. Um, I feel very lucky tonight to be able to introduce my students to you, especially on this really important day of honour, respect and recognition, uh, in, in National Indigenous Peoples Day. And I'm thankful to Trudy and Chaz for entrusting my students and I to embark on this endeavour with Indigenous education. When they asked me to find some students who would like to engage in this workshop, Born Into Activism, I knew I could call upon many of the students at my school in my classes who never ceased to inspire and challenge me with their passion for learning and their capacity for critical thinking and empathy. And most importantly, for their quest for justice and for building a better world. Um, so the students I will introduce to you are three of the seven who really took this planning and the facilitation of this workshop under their own wings and they created questions and facilitated a really moving and um, inspiring interview of, of some exceptionally established Indigenous leaders and equally inspiring Indigenous youth leaders. And I want you to know that the questions that they came up with are their their keen desire to seek answers to and to learn with their ears and their hearts and their minds. I will introduce to you Lucy Hiscox, Nathan Yee, Caitlin Fairbanks, who will all speak to you in this order. And I, I know that they will share with you some of their hopes for the future of education and hopefully the near future in regard to the continued and expanded infusion of authentic and meaningful learning of Indigenous worldview, knowledge, cultures, and languages. And I'd like to now pass it to Lucy Hiscox. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Lucy Hiscox and I'm extremely thankful to be able to share my voice today. Uh, however, one of my main takeaways from the workshop was the significance of Indigenous voices. In schools, there's not enough exposure to these voices. All we hear is through a textbook or someone else. To hear from Indigenous peoples doing incredible things in their community was so inspiring. Their individual stories and their willingness to share is so inspiring. Their mindset that I will be implementing in my own life. As a white person, my responsibility is to learn, learn from the mistakes of my ancestors and how I can reconcile with the people who are still suffering from these mistakes today. It's not a part of our past, it's ongoing and I wanna do whatever I can to educate myself and those around me. 
This being said, my voice is not the important one. I instead want to listen, to learn, and to educate others like me. This workshop showed me the mindset of many Indigenous peoples, one that I had not seen throughout my education with the VSB. This week is my very last week of high school, and I want to spend it reflecting on what could change for the people stepping into my shoes. My younger brother is starting high school in the fall, and I want him to learn the things I didn't in his courses. Throughout my time with VSB, I've seen the importance of Indigenous education, but not only in student education, educating teachers, staff, and administration on why these topics are necessary, as well as implementing more Indigenous support systems, is a step in the right direction for everyone. As trustees, you have the power to change for the better. As my student, my job is to learn, and I cannot learn without educators having the right tools. This is why implementing non-performative, authentic actions into course curriculums, particularly social studies classes, is so vital to the reconciliation of Indigenous peoples in Canada in the next generations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nathan Yee, and I would like to thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to speak with you virtually today. For me, the biggest takeaway from the workshop was how beneficial it was to hear from so many different Indigenous perspectives. We were given the chance to hear and learn from a chief who felt that she wasn't an activist, an activist, and two youth, one of whom was just beginning his journey in discovering his indigeneity, and where one studied political sciences and the other is currently studying in a health-related field. It shined a light on how, although they are all different and shared a unique perspective and experiences with us, they were all fighting for a common goal. I connected this to my experience in both my Social Justice 12 class as well as my BC First Peoples class where we learned of the Indigenous peoples in the now because they are very much alive and are still fighting. So often do we learn of Indigenous peoples in the past and it often takes away from their present. However, as I learned in those classes, it is so crucial to learn of their present struggles as well as successes in order to play a role in reconciliation, which we all have as settlers of this land. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caitlin Fairbanks. And I'm very excited to share today. I feel like textbooks and the news often focuses on the trauma and pain of the past. Although this is so important to acknowledge, it often fails to mention the vitality and resiliency of indigenous peoples, pe uh, indigenous people and culture. I genuinely believe that the education system can amplify Indigenous worldview, knowledge, voice, and truth, but this is only if the VSB continues to push for these essential classes and education. My favorite part of the workshop was when it shined a light on what it would be like to build a brighter and stronger future. I know that we can create a culture and narrative that aids in reconciliation, but I believe this is done by adapting and growing the education system to fit the needs of our growing society. I imagine the profound impact that this shift will have on the next generation in a few years when I am hopefully a teacher and then in several more when I'm a mother. I like to imagine kids engaged and connected to Indigenous education. I picture them learning about Indigenous culture in a variety of ways and enriching their lives. I know that this future is possible and that, it can, and that continued activism and knowledge that Indigenous people share will make schools a better place and a brighter place for generations to come. Um, I'm now going to pass it back over to Chas. Thank you so much. Um, I would just like to uh, end the evening with thanking Stacy for uh, assisting us in um, gathering the students. Thank you, students, for your your beautiful words. And uh, it was a very, very enjoyable evening. And I'm glad you have much to take away for the from those conversations with the the four leaders. And um, continue to. Uh, do the good work you're doing as allies. And uh, as we say, not Samat, we're one. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just wanna say thank you to Stacy uh, for guiding your students and to Lucy, Nathan and Caitlin for your really wonderful presentations. We really enjoyed having you here. And I just also wanted to say thank you, Chaz, for your leadership and for the work of the Indigenous Education Department. It's truly been inspiring. So that was our program highlight for this evening. Really well done. Thank you everybody who came to present. 
We will now move to the adoption of the minutes um, of the meeting of May 25th, 2021. Is there a mover for that? Moved so moved by S. Mark. Sorry, I didn't hear who that was. Alan? Me, Fraser Valentine. Oh, Fraser, thank you. So moved by Fraser and seconded by Esther Lida. Are there any questions about the minutes themselves? Okay, not seeing any. If there is no objection from trustees, we will adopt the minutes of May 25th, 2021 by consensus. Okay, are there any matters arising from the minutes? Okay, we will then move to the adoption of the minutes of the meeting of June 14th, 2021. Can we get a mover for that? Moved by Trustee Parrott and seconder, Trustee Gonzalez. Are there any questions about those minutes themselves? Okay, if there are no objections, we will adopt the minutes of June 14th, 2021 by consensus. And matters arising from those minutes? Okay, there are none. We will now move to item 4.1, superintendent's update, and I will turn it over to Suzanne Hoffman. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and to provide an update um, for you. Taylor, thanks for working the slides today. Could I have the next slide, please? Trustees, this evening, I'm going to do a brief superintendent's update for you. Uh, we will be looking ahead uh, to the year that lies ahead and some of the initiatives that are underway. There is no data in this evening's presentation. It is more a look at what some of the key initiatives are within the school district. Next slide, please. The three initiatives that I would like to spend just a little bit of time reminding you of are the education plan, the framework for enhancing student learning, and the anti-racism and non-discrimination strategic plan. On the next slide, I'll start with the education plan. And trustees, as you have heard already, this aligns with board policy number four and in the section which is about the strategic planning and the role and responsibility of the board to eventually approve the education plan. I'd like to thank the staff here at the Ed Center and out in schools and our stakeholders that have already been a part of this process and there is more work to do as the fall unfolds. The intent of the education plan will really to be um, aspirational, educationally focused, and really delving down deeply into improving life chances for our students and to having them experience greater success as they are a part of the VSB. And it really is about helping students realize what their dreams can be. As we do this work, we plan on aligning it with other documents within the district and intentionally making it an inclusive process by having many, many people involved and engaged. The next slide shows you the timeline. And as you can, some of you are aware, trustees, I know you've been going out to schools and engaging with students if you're able to do so in this particular month. But as we look ahead to September, December, we will gather more information. December, January, it will go over to the trustees. You as a board can develop the goals and the objectives. And then we will also look to see what that roadmap is going to be and what the work will entail as we look ahead to the areas that are strategically educationally focused for our school district. And trustees, it is the intention of the team that is working on this to bring this to you in April for approval. And of course, at that time, the work truly just begins. The next slide shows the second important document that we will be working on in the months ahead. And we have already done uh, as district staff an inordinate amount of work and it is the framework for enhancing student learning. Again, this piece of work aligns and will be uh, fed into the education plan. So there will be a synergy between the two documents and the two pieces of work. This is a requirement of the Ministry of Education and there are requirements that have been set out that we must follow. And we have to look at what it is we need to do strategically around improving outcomes. What are the initiatives and the practices that can support the students um, across our school district within the context of Vancouver? And on the next slide, you'll see a timeline for this particular piece of work where the presentation of the FESL report to stakeholders uh, was supposed to take place at the student learning and well-being report or committee meeting, sorry, 
We will now bring that forward to you again in the fall, first thing in September. We will look to align this work with our school plans that are being created in our schools, again to the education plan, and then our Indigenous Education Council as that comes into being with the work of, our, of CHAS and our Indigenous Education Department. There will be again pieces of work that will fall out as part of this. The intent of the framework is to improve outcomes, is to have alignment, and again, we have a great team that have done a lot of work, and I know that in the fall, trustees, we will bring that piece of work back to you. A third significant piece of work is identified on the next slide, and that is the anti-racism and non-discrimination strategic plan. The engagement process has been titled Stronger Together. And the intent is to have a safe, inclusive, and caring learning environment for all. So again, there's a good alignment between this piece of work, the framework, and our education plan. And as is always the case, but particularly so in this piece of work, it is about having an inclusive opportunity for all members of our community where we intend to listen and to learn from each and every one of them. This work is challenging, it's complex, and it's very thoughtful and thorough work. And again, I'm grateful to those that are already working on this plan as you have already trustees been updated as to how this is working. On the next slide, you can also see the kind of engagement that we are looking to do across our community. And there are lots of opportunities for individuals to become engaged in this work. And we look forward to the Stronger Together hashtag becoming um, informative on social media so that, again, we can hear the voices of as many people as possible on this work. Trustees, what I would like to say between these three things, that is actually huge uh, pieces of work that are of paramount importance to the school district. And I think it's exciting work, and I'm appreciative of everyone for the, what they have done to contribute to the good work taking place across our district. And this team has been at it, hard at work as well, and they've done a great job so far. As we continue to look ahead, and trustees, you started to hear some of these words being used across our school district, and they are on the next slide. And they are words that we will look to use throughout the school year. The first word being about renew. The second word, reconnect. And the third and final word that we would focus on is reimagine. And I'll just take you through some high-level thoughts of the meanings of each of those in the context of our work. With respect to the word renew, on the next slide. This is really the pieces of work that we need to be thoughtful and mindful about around healing, the wellness, the resilience, the welcoming back, the trauma that individuals as families have perhaps faced, the mental health impacts for our students and for our communities as a whole. So really looking to see what systems and structures and supports we need to put in place for our students, for our staff, and for our communities as a whole. So renew is the first piece of work that is really important. On the next slide is the second word, and that is the word reconnect. And when we focus on coming back in September, we know that we need to reconnect with our community, and there we go, thank you, Taylor, community, the relationships, the team building, getting to know our students. Oh, not quite yet, Taylor, thank you. Getting to know where our students are at academically and really um, finding the place where they all need to be and then moving them along with respect to their learning. But the words renew and reconnect will be the starting points as we come together in September with our schools and with our communities. And thank you, Taylor. On the next slide is reimagine. And this is the piece of work that once we have started to take care of some of those foundational elements for student success, we start to say, what is it that we can look at that we have done through COVID that has been creative, innovative, inspirational, or very different? And how do we take the very best of what we did do and continue to reimagine a preferred future for the young people within our care? And we've had lots of opportunities to see what has taken place in our hybrid models, in our outdoor learning spaces, in our lab spaces such as Future Play, the coding, or even the transition over to a semester model. Lots of opportunities to reimagine what our school district can look like as we look ahead. So finally, on the next slide, just want to assure trustees that as a staff, we are actively engaged in planning for the safe reopening of our schools in September, and there is lots of work that has already taken place and will continue to happen over the summer. 
Chair, that is the first part of my update for this evening. Thank you, Superintendent Hoffman. Are there any questions from trustees? Okay, I am not, oh, I'm sorry, Trustee Fraser. Thank you, Chairperson. And, you know, I'd just like to thank um, Superintendent Hoffman for pulling together these three big elements of the work we're undertaking and um, talking about how they weave together and also how they weave into the new school year and focusing, as always, on the students. And, you know, this is the looking ahead part, but I, I'd also like to look back and just make sure that we thank uh, all our staff who have been part of this extraordinary year with us. You know, everyone in the schools, the teachers, support staff, office staff, custodians, principals, um, those behind the scenes in the workshop and the ground crews and those in the uh, district offices for, you know, doing everything we can to make sure students are doing the best they can during this, this year. And um, I hope everyone can have a break in the summer and come back refreshed in the fall, um, trustees to undertake the work ahead of us and students to engage in their learning. Thank you, Chair. To move on to part two of my update, it is the COVID-19 update. So Taylor onto the next slide and then very quickly onto the next slide. There are three things in the COVID update, year to date data, the rapid response team, and then our vaccination student videos. On the next slide, trustees, you can see the graph that shows in blue the secondary schools notifications that have taken place and in yellow are elementary schools. There has been a between April to May 20th, a 92% decrease in secondary school notifications in, an, in our elementary schools. There has been an 86% decrease in school notifications. The overwhelming majority of the events were self-monitoring in nature. We had up to June 16th, uh, or sorry, in May there were four class isolations at three of the schools in June up to June 16th. We have had zero class self-isolations. The health and safety of students and staff was at the very beginning of the pandemic a top priority and has continued to be so. And we worked very, very closely with Vancouver Coastal Health with respect to this work. The next slide shows you all of the VS or Vancouver Coastal Health cases. That's the top line. And the bottom line is the VSB cases. And you can see that we follow a similar trend as a school district to what has taken place in the coastal health. And this is staff and student cases. Okay. And then when you look at the next slide, the next slide provides you with a, an update on the rapid response teams. And this is a joint Vancouver Coastal Health Board, Vancouver School Board and a Ministry of Education initiative. The rapid response team ser served all Vancouver Coastal Health districts and independent schools. And as you know, the rapid response team was hosted here in Vancouver. It was a proactive resource providing information, COVID-19 updates, creating things like graphics and posters, and also looking at the staff and student vaccine rollout. It also supported COVID-19 test kits, distributions to other and distribution to other districts. It was originally intended to end on June 30th, as the graphic indicates, but in August, um, it has going to it will be renewed to support the 2021-22 school year with Ministry of Education funding, and we expect the COVID focus to shift to addressing other health and safety issues that are arising from the pandemic, such as mental health as an example. On the next slide, as part of the work of the rapid response team, and I don't know trustees, I think our deputy superintendent shared these with at least the chair and the vice chair, I believe, but there are vaccine translation student videos. There was a need identified for proactive resources available in different languages. And through this student leadership project, the district was able to support public health by messaging through videos made by students for students. And in these videos, students shared instructions on how to register for a vaccine appointment. A library of videos were shared across the region, district websites, social media, and they are available in 10 different languages 
French, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, Punjabi, Ukrainian, Korean, Japanese, Tagalog, English. So there's a wealth of information that can be accessed. The last couple of slides are just a reflection on the transition through COVID. As we all know, in March 2020, this is where we started. And there are three distinct phases when we are looking at a pandemic response. The initial phase is a crisis response, like immediately we need to do something and spend a great deal of intense time figuring out how to manage, how to deal. We then came up, as other school districts did, with a response, and it's a sustainable response. How do we continue to navigate the complexities of the time? And immediately in March, we also started to think very early on about what does that recovery phase look like? And you can see the priorities and who was all involved with this work. As you look at the next slide, you'll see that it actually extends because the crisis response and the sustained response stay somewhat the same. But the recovery for sure will go into September 2021. But we do know for a fact that it will go far beyond there as we look at all things that we need to do to put things back in place post COVID-19. And I really appreciate what Colette did on the very last slide for me. So on the last slide, Taylor, instead of putting recovery in that bottom, going back to looking at how can we renew, how can we reconnect, and how can we reimagine in a post COVID-19 world. And I would like to ex acknowledge the extraordinary work of our COVID team. Colette was at the helm and David Nelson, and there was a group of people that worked tirelessly seven days a week, all hours of days and nights to ensure that the health and safety of our staff and students was taken care of and that communication happened in as timely a manner as possible. And I'm very grateful for all that they have done. And that chair completes the second part of my update. Thank you so much. Are there any questions or comments from trustees? Thank you, Suzanne. I'm not seeing any questions or comments. I just wanted to provide a quick update on the search for a new superintendent. So that search is now well underway and the executive search firm Boyden is in the process of discussing with the district stakeholders and our indigenous partners, the characteristics and traits that they would like to see in a new superintendent. These discussions are also focusing on the challenges facing the district and the opportunities that exist for improvement. From those discussions, a district profile and a candidate profile will be produced to be provided to candidates. The district website now contains a link to a page that provides more information on the search, including an overall timeline. The web page will be constantly updated with new information as it becomes available during the search. So we will continue to provide updates as we go along uh, through the process. Okay, our next uh, piece of business is acknowledging our student trustee. So we are so pleased to acknowledge Ricky Wang, our student trustee for the past school year. Ricky, if you'd like to put your camera on while we thank you, that would be great. Okay. Okay, Ricky, I'm going to continue to speak. If you'd like to put your camera on, you may. Um, for Ricky, he has not had the opportunity to experience a typical school year as our student trustee, and I am delighted to announce that Ricky will be the Vancouver School District student trustee again for 2021-2022. Ricky, for the work you have done over the course of this school year, thank you. We look forward to continuing to work with you again next year, and we really hope that we will be here in person together and you will have the full experience of being a stu student trustee. I will now turn it over to you for your student trustee report. Ricky, are you with us? I see you in as the attendee, but you're muted. Yes, Superintendent Hoffman. 
Chair, perhaps I can ask one of our staff to reach out to Ricky, and if you move along to some of the committee reports, we could then put him back into the agenda a little further along. Okay, yes, I will do that. Thank you. Okay, so we will then move to our first committee report, which is from the Policy and Governance Committee. The chairperson of that committee is Trustee Chan Pedley. Thank you, Chairperson. I'd like to move receipt of the minutes from the meeting of June 2nd, 2021. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Trustee Gonzalez, are there any questions about the minutes themselves? Okay, not seeing any questions. If there is no objection, we will adopt the report by consensus. Okay. Are there any matters arising from the meeting? None that I know of. Thank you. And is there any new business? No, Chairperson. Perfect. Thank you, Trustee Chan Pedley. The next committee report is from the Personnel Committee, and the chairperson of that committee is Trustee Gonzalez. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to move receipt of the minutes from the Personnel Committee uh, held on uh, June 2nd, 2021. And seconded by Trustee Parrott. Are there any questions about the minutes themselves? If there are no objections, we will adopt the minutes by, we will adopt the report by consensus. Okay. Not seeing any, are there any matters arising? No, they're not, there aren't any. Thank you, and is there any new business? No, thank you. Thank you. The next committee report is from Student Learning and Wellbeing, and the chairperson of that committee is Trustee Reddy. Thanks, Chair. I'd like to move receipt of the report from the June 9th Student Learning and Wellbeing Committee meeting. Thank you. And a seconder, seconded by Trustee Parrott. Are there any questions about the minutes themselves? Okay. If there are no objections, we will adopt the report by consensus. Are there any matters arising? Chair, I just wanted to highlight that we had a specific uh, delegation request for the board to hear. Um, their um, request for the board to consider advocacy to the Ministry of Education with request to defund private Catholic schools from the Ministry of Education. Um, and they um, contextualized it with the recent um, news coming out of uh, Kamloops and the information about residential schools asking for the board to um, consider that. So I wanted to just bring that forward as an item that was raised at the committee by delegation. Thank you, Trustee Reddy. Are you taking any additional action other than raising the item? Not at this time, Chair. Okay, thank you. Were there any other matters arising? Trustee Reddy, no other matters arising? No. Okay, thank you. Is there any new business from the meeting? Trustee Reddy, no new business? Uh, nope, not for me, thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will net move to the next committee report, which is from the Facilities Planning Committee, and the chairperson of that committee is Trustee Wong. Thank you, Chairperson. I move receipt of the report, Facilities Planning Committee report dated June 14, 2021. Thank you, and do we have a seconder? Seconded. Thank you, Trustee Ballantyne. Are there any questions about the minutes themselves? And if there are no objections, we will adopt the report by consensus. Okay, not seeing any. I will now return to Trustee Wong for matters arising from this meeting. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, there are a number of uh, resolutions coming out of the committee. Uh, the first three has to do with bylaws and right of ways. I'll just head straight into it. First one is Eric Hamber replacement school encumbrances bylaw 2021, um, right of way for general services, rainwater management system, 
and Transportation Demand Management. I'll move that the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Eric Hamber Replacement School Encumbrances, Bylaw 2021, be read a first time the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Wong. Do we have a seconder? Chen Pedley to second. Thank you, Trustee Chen Pedley. Is there any discussion? Okay, not seeing any. We will now take a vote on the motion. So for the first time through, we're going to go through the names. Trustee Ballantyne? In support. <coughs> Trustee Chen Pedley? In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser? In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez? In support, thank you. Trustee Hansen? In support. Trustee Parrott? In support, thank you. Trustee Reddy? Support. Trustee Wong is the mover and I, uh, sorry, Trustee Wong, go ahead and vote. In support. Thank you, and I am in support. So the motion carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Eric Hamber Replacement School Encumbrances Bylaw 2021 be read a second time the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you. And I'm going to use the same seconder, Trustee Chen Pedley. Is there any discussion for this item? No. Nope. Okay. And we will approve this by consensus if there is no objection. Okay, not Thank seeing you. any. Back to you, Trustee Wong. Thank you. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, approves having all three readings of the Eric Hamber Replacement School Encumbrances Bylaw 2021, the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Wong. And I will use the same seconder, Trustee Chen Pedley, if there's no objection. Is there any discussion? We will approve by consensus unless there is any um, disagreement. Not hearing any, the motion passes unanimously. Over to you, Trustee Wong. Thank you. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Eric Hamber Replacement School Encumbrances Bylaw 2021 be read a third time the 21st day of June 2021 and further that the Secretary Treasurer be authorized to sign, seal, and register the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Air Camber Replacement School Encumbrances Bylaw 2021, and that the signed and sealed the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Air Camber Replacement School Encumbrances Bylaw 2021 be forwarded to the Ministry of Education, Funding Department for Registration and Certification and for registration at land titles office as required. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and a seconder, please. Trustee Gonzalez. Seconded. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, we're gonna go through the names and take a vote on this one. Trustee Chan Pedley. I support. Thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In support, thank you. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In favor, thanks. Trustee Reddy. Support. Trustee Wong. In support. Trustee Ballantyne. In support. And I am in support, so the motion passes unanimously. Okay, and back to you, Trustee Wong. Thank you. The next two uh, right away bylaws are for elementary schools. Uh, first one is Bayview Elementary Statutory Right-of-Way Bylaw. It's a new uh, BC Hydro connection for electrical services as part of the SMP. Move that the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Bayview Elementary School Utility Right-of-Way Bylaw 2021 be read a first time the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you. And a seconder? Chan Pedley to second. Thank you, Trustee Chen Pedley. Any discussion? Okay, we will take a vote on the motion. Trustee Fraser? In support. Trustee Gonzalez? In support. Trustee Hansen? In support. Trustee Parrott? In favor, thanks. Trustee Reddy? Support. Trustee Wong? Support. Trustee Ballantyne? In support. 
Trustee Chen Pedley. In favor, thank you. And I am in favor. The motion carries unanimously. Trustee Wong. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver Bayview Elementary School Utility Right of Way Bylaw 2021 be read a second time, the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, and I will use the same seconder, Trustee Chen Pedley. Is there any discussion? And we will approve the motion by consensus if there is no uh, disagreement. Seeing none, the motion. Sorry, go ahead, Trustee Wong. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, approves having all three readings of the Bayview Elementary School Utility Right of Way Bylaw 2021. 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Wong. Again, I will use the same seconder, Trustee Chan Pedley. And if there is no disagreement, we will approve by consensus. Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Trustee <you>. Wong. <laughs> that the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Bayview Elementary School Utility Right of Way Bylaw 2021 be read a third time the 21st day of June 2021 and further that the secretary treasurer be authorized to sign seal and register the board of education of school district number 39 Vancouver Bay Bayview elementary school utility right of way bylaw 2021 and that the signed and sealed board of education of school district number 39 Vancouver Bayview elementary school utility right of way bylaw 2021 be forwarded to the ministry of education funding department for registration and certification and to BC Hydro for registration at land titles office as required. So moved. Thank you, Trustee Wong and a seconder. Ballantyne. Thank you, Trustee Ballantyne. Is there any discussion? Okay, moving to the vote, Trustee Gonzalez. In support. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In support, thanks. Tr Trustee Reddy. Support. Trustee Wong. Support. Trustee Ballantyne. In support. Trustee Chan Pedley. In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support. And I am in support. The motion carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. The next one is with regards to Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School, BC Hydro right of way bylaw. Uh, this has to do with the BC Hydro TELUS part of the replacement school. Move that the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School, Utility Rights of Way Bylaw 2021, be read a first time the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and a seconder. Oh, I'm sorry, Trustee Parrott, I was looking the wrong direction. Is there any discussion? Okay, we will now take the vote. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In favor, thanks. Trustee Reddy. Support. Trustee Wong. Support. Trustee Ballantyne. Support. Trustee Chen Pedley. In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support. Trustee Gonzalez? In favor. And I am in support. The motion carries unanimously. Trustee Wong? Thank you. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Matthew Begbie Ele Elementary School Utilities Right of Way Bylaw 2021 be read a second time, the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Wong. And we'll use the same seconder, Trustee Parrott. Is there any discussion? If not, we will approve by consensus if there's no disagreement. Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, approves having all three readings of the Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School Utilities Right of Way Bylaw 2021, the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you. I will use the same seconder, Trustee Parrott. Any discussion? And we will approve by consensus if there's no disagreement. Okay. And it passes unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School Utilities Rights of Way Bylaw 2021 be read a third time the 21st day of June 2021. And further, 
that the Secretary Treasurer be authorized to sign, seal, and register the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School Utilities Right of Way Bylaw 2021, and that the signed and sealed Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Sir Matthew Begbie Elementary School Utilities Rights of Way Bylaw 2021 be forwarded to the Ministry of Education Funding Department for registration and certification and to BC Hydro and TELUS for registration at land titles office as required. So move. Thank you, Trustee Wong. And a seconder, please. Okay, Trustee Parrott. Any discussion? Okay, we will move to the vote. Trustee Parrott. In favor, Chair. Thank you. Trustee Reddy. Support. Support. Trustee Wong. Support. Trustee Ballantyne. In support. Thank you. Tr Trustee Chan Pedley. Support. Thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support. Thanks. Trustee Gonzalez. In favor. Thanks. Trustee Hansen. In support. And I am in support. So it carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. Thank you, Chairperson. The next one is the Capital Plan Bylaw number 2021-22 CPSD 39-01. Um, as everyone's aware that this year's response from the provincial government from last year's submission, this is last year's submission, um, they did two separate um, response letters. So uh, keep in mind there are two, two separate responses, but this covers both of them. Um, there were no major new uh, expansion or SMP, but there's a continuation of a number of projects. Uh, with a particular uh, note is um, they view heat pumps, HVAC upgrades were included in the second response, as well as uh, two playgrounding um, submissions were approved. I'll move that the Board of Education of School District Vancouver Capital Plan Bylaw Number 2021-22 CPSD 3901 be read a first time the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you and Second a second. Thank you, Trustee Ballantyne. Any discussion? Okay, we will move to the vote. Trustee Reddy? Support. Trustee Wong? Support. Trustee Ballantyne? Support. Trustee Chan Pedley? Support. Thank you. Trustee Fraser? I'm in support, but I think we might need to um, add school district number 39 to the, just add number 39 for consistency in the wording. So sorry, Trustee Fraser, we're just um, in the vote. So you're take calling a point of order? Um, I th yeah, I can do that. That's Okay, okay thank you, point. Trustee. So, Trustee Wong, when you do the next few, you'll add the 39 to them appropriately? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Fraser. And your vote was? In support. In support. Okay, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez? In support. Trustee Hansen? In support. Trustee Parrott? In favor. And I am in favor, so it carries unanimously. Trustee Wong? Thank you. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver Capital Plan Bylaw Number 2021-22, CPSD 3901, be read a second time the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you. I will use the same seconder, Trustee Ballantyne. Is there any discussion? Okay, we will approve by unanimous consent if there is no disagreement. Okay, and it carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. That the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, approves having all three readings of the Capital Plan Bylaw Number 2021-2020-2021 CPS. Hang on, is that is that correct? 2020-21 CPSD 39. Um, uh, just going to hold off a second for Secretary Treasurer to double check. Should that read 2021-22? It should be 2021-2022. Thank you. 2021-2022, uh, CPSD 39-01, uh, the 21st day of June 2021. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and I will use the same seconder. Trustee Ballantyne, is there any discussion? 
No, we can approve by consensus if there's no disagreement. Thank you. And that the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver, Capital Plan Bylaw Number 2021-22, CPSD 39-01, be read a third time the 21st day of June 2021. And further, that the Secretary Treasurer be authorized to sign, seal, and register Capital Plan Bylaw Number 2021-22, CPSD 3901 with the Ministry of Education. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and a seconder, please. Trustee Gonzalez, any discussion? Okay, we will now move to the vote. Trustee Wong. In support. Trustee Ballantyne. In support, thanks. Trustee Chen Pedley. In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support. Trustee Gonzalez? In support. Trustee Hansen? In support. Trustee Parrott? In support. Trustee Reddy? Support. And I am in support, so it carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Wong. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we move on to the final um, recommendation, I'd just like to point out one, one issue with regards to the capital plan bylaw. Uh, there were concerns about the requirement of the of a LTIP, long-term investment plan, required of Vancouver. And um, as stated at the committee, uh, there will be a notice of motion coming up towards the end of the meeting with regards to that. Um, final recommendation coming out of the committee uh, with support is the capital plan submission 2022-2023. Um, just wanted to, before I move to the the motion, uh, just need to say that after the Facilities Planning Committee meeting at which the 2022-2023 five-year capital plan was recommended to go to the board for approval, the future plan school for the Lord Roberts Annex site has been added to the plan. This was done to alert the Ministry of the need for that school down the road. Just wanted to uh, note that uh, the addition of that school. So I'll move that in accordance with provisions under section 1424 of the School Act, the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver Board of Education, approves the proposed major capital program five year capital plan as provided on the attached five year capital plan summary 2022 2023. And that, in accordance with provisions under Section 142.4 of the School Act, the Board of Education of School District Number 39, Vancouver Board of Education, approves the proposed minor capital program five-year capital plan as provided on the attached five-year capital plan summary 2022-2023. Thank you, Trustee Wong. And a seconder? Trustee Gonzalez, is there any discussion? Not seeing any, we will now move to the vote. Trustee Ballantyne. In favor. Trustee Chan Pedley. In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In favor. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In favor. Trustee Reddy. Support. Trustee Wong. Support. And I am in support. The motion carries unanimously. Is there any new business from the Facilities Planning Committee? There's a second one. Uh, no new business from me. Okay, thank you. Oh, he, he read both of them together? Okay. Okay, so I just want to say that the online link for submitting questions to this meeting will now be closed. We will move to <coughs> report on private session that the Board of Education authorized the Board Chair to report to the, June 20, to the June 21st, 2021 public meeting that at the private session of June 7th, 2021, the Board discussed a personnel matter. The Board of Education authorized the Board Chair to report to the June 21st, 2021 public meeting that at the private session of June 9th, 2021, the Board discussed a personnel matter. And finally, the Board of Education authorized the Board Chair to report to the June 21st, 2021 public meeting that at the private session of June 21st, 2021, the Board discussed property matters, business interests, personnel matters, and legal matters.
We will now move to item eight, which is report from trustee representatives. We have one report from trustee Wong on the diversity advisory committee meeting held on May 26, 2021. Are there any questions for trustee Wong? <coughs> Okay, I am not seeing any. I just want to check in on the status. Okay, we have not been able to connect with Ricky at this time, so we have continued to try. Uh, but just to say he will be with us again next year, so we are very happy to have him back as our student trustee. Okay, we will now move to old business and I will call on our superintendent to present the report on the delegation meeting pilot review. Thank you, Chair. And with respect to our student trustee, we will ensure that trustees get a copy of his report and trustee memo, as he did have one prepared for this evening. We know that. So trustees, in your package, there is a report capturing the content of your three uh, pilot meetings that were delegation meetings. And staff are now looking for direction for planning purposes <coughs> um, for next year. There is a recommendation on the part of staff in the package for your consideration, but we look forward to hearing the outcome of your deliberations so we can plan for the year ahead. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Superintendent Hoffman. So any discussion or comments from trustees? Trustee Parrott. Thank you, Chairperson. I have a motion. Okay, would you like to present your motion? Yes. I'll try, <laughs> that the board extend the pilot of delegation meetings for the 2021-22 20, school year. During this second phase of the pilot, delegations will be, not be scheduled or heard at any regular standing committees. Delegations will be directed to sign up and speak directly to trustees through a committee of the whole. In which stakeholder, to which stakeholders will be invited and encouraged to attend. Um, oh, I don't see it's up there. This where Marlene is just getting the wording up Thank as you. you speak. Yep. These. These meetings, these committee of the whole meetings will be scheduled a week prior to the regular board meetings. The second pilot will be evaluated and reviewed at the May 2022 board meeting to make a decision on how to proceed with delegations for the rest of the 21-22 school year and for the 2022-23 school year. Thank you, Trustee Parrott. So we'll just wait till we get the wording up. And I just want to clarify, was it May 2022 board meeting or April? 20? April. Okay. Sorry, did I say May? Let's April. just get the wording April. up and then we'll yeah. discuss. And I just want to let everybody know, trustee, student trustee Ricky Wang has joined us in the meeting. After this item, we will go to him for his report. Okay, so let's review the wording and make sure that's correct. Trustee Parrott, is that the correct wording? It's it's much better than the correct wording. So thank you very much, Marlene. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so that is the motion on the floor. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Trustee Gonzalez. Trustee Parrott, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Chair. The, uh, the three delegate meetings that we had um, th this spring, I thought went very well. And I, I appreciated hearing from the delegations at, at those meetings. This, uh, we, we um, have 
I have amended this slightly from the uh, recommendation to uh, make sure that our stakeholders have an opportunity to involve themselves in the discussion and hearing from delegations. And so that this motion recommends that these meetings be committees of the whole with stakeholders present. We also, uh, I've shortened the May 2022nd recommendation to April because that's just the way it, it fits. And that will make a re recommendation then for the remainder of the school year and the next one. Thank you, Trustee Parrott. Is there any other trustee that would like to speak to the motion? Yep. Trustee Reddy. Thanks, Chair. And this has already been seconded, is that right? Yes, it has. Thank you. Thanks. So is this um, item here coming up under new business then in lieu of the item coming up at 9.1 or so it is instead of? So uh, staff made a recommendation. It was not a motion. It would be up to a trustee to take that recommendation and make a motion or if trustees chose not to make a motion then we wouldn't be doing anything with the pilot continuation. So based on the recommendation and the direction from trustees that we would make a decision about the pilot program at this meeting, Trustee Parrott has brought forward this motion. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Did you have a qu another question? No. Okay. Trustee Fraser. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you, uh, Trustee Parrott, for bringing forward these these this motion and including the amendments mm. because I think they um, capture some of the points that we've heard in feedback about the current pilot that um, it's difficult to sign up for committee meetings when you don't know the agenda ahead of time and I think uh, this timing will help with that and also the ability of uh, stakeholders to um, attend at the committee the whole meeting. I think in our eagerness to uh, take the three meeting pilot, we we didn't have the feedback loop that we normally have in going back to stakeholders uh, at committee for discussion. And I think with the timeline we have now with April, we can certainly have a more robust discussion to get feedback on what's working well, maybe what's not working so well. Um, you know, how, how, what, what are we trying to achieve and how well we're doing that? So I, I appreciate those changes that will be able to try and get us as a board to a better place to make sure that we can hear uh, people who wish to speak to us and that uh, the process for doing that is um, easier, you know, that this will be easier. And I, you know, I, I'm assuming that part of the work will be to put uh, information on the website about how to speak to trustees and how to look at the agenda items. And I think that, um, you know, we, you know, I, I, I think that this second phase of the uh, pilot building on the first phase will be useful. Thank you, Trustee Fraser. Trustee Gonzalez. Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, bearing in mind again that this is a pilot, we've tried it one way, I think it's prudent to look at uh, what other options are available. I, I like the idea of trying to uh, let the standing committees be its purpose, which is to really have stakeholders engaging with staff and with, with you know, with the, the four trustees that sit on those standing committees at a time. Um, and then having this opportunity to have a general uh, almost monthly delegation night um, without having the worry sometimes of time and other meetings on the same nights. Um, I think it just gives an opportunity to have, uh, I think, greater uh, selections and numbers of delegations, um, which is, you know, we want to hear from, from more people. I think this is a way to do it without the encumbrances that sometimes come with standing committees where there's time constraints. And also there's the opportunity at times, which we've seen, where the, the business of the standing committees doesn't actually get heard. And I think that's problematic in its own right because staff go to a tremendous amount of time and energy and work into these reports 
reports out and if they don't get covered then it's sort of a lot of effort that isn't acknowledged so i think this is an interesting separation it's something we can look at and then decide uh, at a later time if it actually does work or not so i'm in support of this thank you thank you trustee gonzalez trustee ready thanks chair yeah i'm just reviewing this motion in light of the pilots we've just had and do have some concerns about reducing opportunities for public input, um, especially at standing committees, which are meant for informed decision making by the public. Um, so it seems to reduce the purpose and function of our standing committees as they currently exist. Um, and not having had a chance to actually perhaps survey delegations or ask how the pilot has been for individuals coming to separate delegation meetings versus a standing committee meeting um, still is a question mark for me. But of course, wanting to underscore my role as a trustee from what I understand is to also listen to feedback from students, parents, public staff, especially in light of the agenda items that come forward at standing committees. And I think um, what I would like to see more of is increasing opportunities for public input, not decreasing them as this motion would do, which is decreasing public input at standing committees. Um, and so I'm thinking a lot about what we're doing to reduce barriers that are structural. And we talk a lot about equity at the board. And one of the major inequities to public decision making is access to decision makers. Um, and of course, the added delegations will allow for some of that, but reducing them simultaneously at standing committees when trustees make recommendations uh, is extremely concerning to me um, and really goes against uh, the democratic values and nature that we set out to say that we have as a board. So I wouldn't be in support of this. Thank you, Trustee Reddy. And I just want to say this certainly wouldn't preclude the board from having additional opportunities for people to speak um, as we had this past year, committees of the whole through the budget process. Certainly that when there's a topic that generates a high amount of interest, such as the school liaison officer program, offering additional nights to speak for specific topics, I think is still on the table. I think what we are trying to do is be adaptable and see how we can offer opportunities that are easily accessible. So I certainly hear your concerns, uh, but just wanted to ensure that there would be other opportunities as well. Trustee Parrott. Um, Chairperson, may I close? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I want to mention um, the barriers that were mentioned. And one of the barriers um, that I saw, which was why the initial motion came forward was the, um, the problem in deciding which standing committee to present your issue to, um, because in, quite often the delegations issues cross uh, categories between facilities and finance or student learning and well-being and facilities. And so one of the things I hope that the, that the pilot would do and this continued one is to remove that bar barrier of having to decide which committee should I go to and what night is this and, and make it simpler for people to come and, and give us their points of view. That's what I hope will happen. With regards to the standing committee, my, my experience as three years, just ending three years on, on the board is that I'm not quite, um, content with with the way our standing committees um, what happens at our standing committees I, I, I don't feel um, I, I don't feel that there's a lot of, of debate and dialogue and 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 I think that the structure which the previous speaker talked about is part of that problem and so while I'm while we do this motion, I'm also thinking in the future about looking at standing committees and see if we can make them more um, more amenable to having um, discussions and dialogues together and and get some some real interesting debates and discussions going um, rather than how it is now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Trustee Parrott. And perhaps without the time constraints from delegations, we might allow ourselves more time for discussion at committee. I think this, these are some of the things we want to investigate through the pilot. 
So uh, with no more questions or comments, I will move to the vote. Trustee Chan Pedley. I'm in full support. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Barb, for bringing up this motion. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In support. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In support, Chair, thank you. Trustee Reddy. Not in support. Trustee Wong. In support, Chair. Trustee Ballantyne. In support, Chair. Thank you, and the motion carries. Okay, well, I will now ask Trustee Wong to present his notice of motion. I, my apologies, I'm sorry. I miss, I forgot where we were, and Ricky Wang, you are now joining us again, so I would like to turn it over to you for your tr student trustee report. Welcome, Ricky. Ricky, are you with us? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not, sh oh, Ricky, you're not muted and I see you in the meeting. Are you, are you with us? Hello. Hello, oh, okay, I heard you, but you cut out. Can you oh, say hello sorry. again? Hello. Hi, Ricky, we can hear you now. You're not very loud, yeah. so maybe speak a bit closer to the microphone if you can. Okay. The 2020-2021 school year has been one filled with surprises for all students. And although many faced difficulties, the year also revealed multiple opportunities for VDSC. In my final year-end report, I will be highlighting some of the most impactful initiatives and events put on by the Vancouver District Student Council this year. This January, Students from around the district submitted tens of questions regarding university life. The VDSC executive team gathered these questions and interviewed alumni from multiple universities around Canada, such as UBC, UFT, and SFU. They covered topics ranging from the average weekly lurk workload to the residency accommodations in their respective universities. The interviews were recorded and uploaded online to the VDSC website where students can freely watch. These interviews helped students get a better understanding of what to expect from each university that they may be considering applying to. We considered this initiative a massive success and will continue to gather feedback on what we can do in the future to help students in the university transition process. This year, 15 school 15 secondary schools participated in the Canley Cup, donating a total of 29,600 cans of food to the Greater Vancouver Food Bank. Point Grey in the number of cans do donated with 9,012 got first place. And when adjusted for the number of students in each school, the three schools with the highest cans to student ratios were Point Grey, Templeton, and Sir Charles Tupper. In that order. In terms of monetary donations, 55,448 were donated this season, surpassing expectations from the VDSC executive. We believe that the preference for monetary donations over cans is attributable to the food bank and student councils setting up websites which students could use to donate, making donating much more convenient than having to physically find and bring in cans. And overall, VDSC is extremely satisfied with the results of the Canley Cup this year, and we were glad to bring students together to help families in need. On April 1st, about 1,500 unique viewers tuned in to watch schools around the district compete in the VDSC's Got Talent event. Up until this point, it had been multiple years since the VDSC had held the event. However, owing to the pandemic, we thought it would be the perfect time to bring back the event through an online medium. We were very proud to be able to showcase the talents of many students to everyone around the district and hope to continue hosting the VDSC's Got Talent in years to come. This year, we also made sure that students were able to voice their opinions. For example, we collected lots of feedback regarding the quarter system. However, the most engagement came from students talking about the termination of the SLO program. There are many responses and we were glad to be able to report them to the v VSB in order to get a better understanding of what regular students felt about the program. 
And finally, I'd like to end off my year-end report by announcing the winners of the VDSC senior executive election. After an extremely competitive race, I am thrilled to report that next year's VDSC lineup will include Joe Sugarman and Tommy Chung as co-presidents. They have worked closely with all the executives this year and have demonstrated that they will be dedicated to their new positions as senior executives and specifically co-presidents. Additionally, I'm excited to announce that I will be serving as your student trustee again next year. I, along with the other VDSC members, are extremely looking forward to making next year the best in the organization's history. And it has been my honor to work with all of you this year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ricky, and congratulations to the VDSC executive and to yourself for being able to serve us next year. We look forward to working with you. Are there any questions from trustees? Okay, I am not seeing any. Thank you so much, Ricky. We look forward to seeing you next year. Have a really wonderful summer. I will now ask Trustee Wong to present his notice of motion. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, as referenced at the Facilities Planning Committee report, I wish to move the following motion, that the Vancouver Board of Education requests to immediately meet with the Minister of Education as co-governors to advance approvals for major capital expansion and seismic projects specifically to seek clarification of a unilaterally imposed requirement of a 10-year investment plan that only pertains to the Vancouver School District. Moreover, to copy all Vancouver MLAs, MLAs MPs, and councillors. Thank you, Trustee Wong, and you would like the motion considered this evening? Yes, please, Chair. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Trustee Gonzalez? Okay, would you like to speak to the motion, Trustee Wong? Thank you. I'll, I'll, I wrote it down. I wrote them down as rationales, but uh, if, I, if you can indulge me a moment. Um, last year's uh, capital plan submission, uh, the, the, the response from the provincial government used uh, the reasoning of uh, no LRFP update. And so they, that, that was the initial response. So, um, of not uh, approving some of the major uh, expansions um, or new schools. Um, so I, I, I don't uh, want to wait another year for this year's capital plan submission um, to wait for the, the response with regards to um, this year's reasoning of a requirement of a new 10-year investment plan requirement. What is unimaginable is that this is, this is only a requirement of Vancouver. I can understand if all districts had the same requirement um, for having this additional 10-year investment plan to be added in um, uh, our capital plan submission. So that is what we consider unfair. Uh, during the election, a few Vancouver MLAs promised a new school at the Olympic Village site. So with these last year and this year's new stipulations or new um, additional requirements uh, made it so the Olympic Village site is not not approved, has not been approved uh, and in the response letter from the provincial government. So we need to address that. Fourthly, as co-governors, we need to be clear. We need to work together and I believe in working with the provincial government um, together, so we come up with directions of how to move projects forward. And we need to have that ongoing discussion rather than a unilateral suddenly, you know, this is, this is the rule we're going with this year. Because as everyone knows, the Vancouver School Board is very clear and uh, we try to be effective in consultation and communication with the public. So as co-governors, we need to be able to go to the public and share that information with confidence. Uh, we, the request is to meet with the new minister, and the current minister um, has not approved any major projects um, since coming on board. So I'd like to, sh I think the board should be sharing that information or that consultation with, with the new minister. And uh, finally, the last part of the the recommendation is to copy all Vancouver MLAs, MPs, and councillors. 
as Vancouver electeds and who are responsible to their constituents, which is basically our constituents, we all share the same constituents, that we need to share with them um, this sudden unilateral stipulation of the Vancouver School District and have them respond to that direction if they're in support or if they have concerns about that, that they can then reach out to the, to the Minister of Education or the Ministry of Education. So I hope uh, my fellow trustees uh, would be supporting this um, motion as we need to advance um, our major major capital expansion and seismic projects. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Trustee Wong. And any trustees to speak? Trustee Parrott? Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you, Trustee Wong, for bringing this motion forward. It's certainly much gentler and probably in that light more acceptable to the Minister of Education than the motion I would have brought forward. I really do think that the minister, the ministry, the minister of education um, are playing games with the Vancouver School Board and I would like it to stop. I think I want them to act as responsible adults uh, and meet their um, election promises particularly as it relates to the school at Olympic Village and the um, election of an NDP uh, candidate in False Creek. I think that by adding this on to what another hoop that the Vancouver School Board has to jump through is disrespectful of our staff, particularly our superintendent and his department who of course have investment plans and they've had them for a very long time. I think that um, if the Minister of Education continues to do this, our, our, um, our working relationship will change significantly. So thank you again, uh, Trustee Wong for being so nice and, um, and seriously wanting to build that relationship with um, the Minister of Education. Trustee Gonzalez. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I as well would like to acknowledge and thank um, Trustee Wong for bringing this forward. You know, this was a, this came out of left field. I think it's um, left us feeling somewhat disheartened. Uh, we're just trying to build a new relationship with a new Minister of Education. And then we were the only school district that's been requested to to take this on and it is uh, really fairly annoying to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm in support of this and uh, I'm not sure you know it's going to lead to much, but uh, we do have to do our own planning and it makes it difficult to plan when the goalposts keep changing. So I'm in support of this. Thank you. Any other trustees wishing to speak to the motion? Okay, I'm not seeing any at this time, so we will move to the vote. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In support. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In support. Trustee Reddy. Support. support. Trustee Wong. Support. Trustee Ballantyne. Support. Trustee Chan Pedley. Support, thank you. And I am in support. The motion carries unanimously. I will now ask Trustee Parrott to present her notice of motion. Thank you, Chairperson. The first notice of motion is that a report, do you want me to read it? Yes, please. That a report be presented to the Vancouver Board of Education to update the quote awareness campaign, campaign for safe playgrounds, that this be, report be provided at the October 2021 board meeting and that the awareness campaign begin in the early new year. That the continued safety issues identified by the Strathcona PAC be referred to staff to continue to work together to resolve these issues. Thank you, Trustee Parrott. And you'd like this motion considered this evening? Yes, please, Chair. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second, Wong. 
Thank you, Trustee Wong. Would you like to speak to the motion, Trustee Parrott? My fingers have problems pushing buttons. Um, just to just to review, the awareness campaign was decided last um, fall to develop a campaign on on safe playgrounds for our, for our students. And you know, with COVID and with staff illnesses, there's it's not a surprise that it it didn't get done when we would have expected it to be done. So this motion is to just bring it forward again and ask that it be put back on the on the agenda and that we begin the campaign in the new year. I want to thank the staff who have been working with Strath the Strathcona PAC. And the last part of the motion is to encourage that that um, working together to continue to resolve the issues that the PAC has identified at their school. Thank you, Trustee Parrott. Any other trustee to speak to the motion? I am not seeing anybody, so we will move to the vote. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In support. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In support. Trustee Reddy. Support. Trustee Wong. In support. Trustee Ballantyne. In support. Trustee Chan Pedley. In support, thank you. And I am in support. The motion carries unanimously. Back to Trustee Parrott. Thank you, Chairperson. The second notice of motion is that TransLink be informed that the Vancouver Board of Education does not support the fare increase for bus transportation effective 2021 July 1st and that TransLink be asked to reconsider the removal of bus stops which impact our students. And you'd like the motion considered this evening, Trustee Parrott? Yes, as the fare increase uh, comes into effect on the 1st of July. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Wong, second. Thank you, Trustee Wong. Trustee Parrott, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you. Uh, the board um, has a position already that that uh, our students ought to be able to travel to school without without uh, a fare. And so uh, increasing the fare is just making that worse. I also looked at the map of um, bus stop closures. They're calling it, Translate's calling it bus stop balancing the closures and many of our particular high schools, but even some of our elementary schools are impacted by the closures of bus stops. And so um, the second part of the motion just asks TransLink to reconsider the removal of those bus stops. Thank you, Trustee Parrott. Is there any other trustee that would like to speak to the motion? I am not seeing anybody, so we will move to the vote. Trustee Gonzalez. In favor. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In support. Trustee Reddy. Support. Trustee Wong. In support, thank you. Trustee Ballantyne. In support. Trustee Chan Pedley. In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser. Support, thank you. And I am in support. The motion carries unanimously. Back to you, Trustee Parrott. Thank you. And the third and last one is uh, regarding the teacher shortage, that the Vancouver Board of Education write to all BC education degree granting institutes and the Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Training to request that the intake of education students be increased and that the BCSTA be requested to write a similar letter and that copies of these letters be sent to the BC Teachers Council and the Ministry of Education. And you would like your motion considered this evening? Um, if, you, if people should think it should go to committee, that's fine with me too. It's your call if you'd like it considered this evening or referred to oh, committee. Well, let's consider it this evening and then we can start next year. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's moved a seconder, Trustee Gonzalez. Would you like to speak to the motion, Trustee Parrott? Yes, just briefly. And and this came, um, this motion came to me uh, 
in a, for a personal reason, my um, my niece is on a wait list to get into an education program, and I thought that that made absolutely no sense when we're in, in a dire need for teachers. And so thanks to the superintendent who did some investigation for me to find out, in fact, who sets those limits, we we did discover that the number of, of people applying to education, the cap number has not been increased in the past few years. So when we're in this need, need for teachers, we haven't increased the number of, of um applicants to the program and I, and I know of at least one that would make a darn good teacher but she'll be waiting to see if she made the wait list so I urge your support for this motion to request that um, we use some common sense and we increase the numbers to allow the people who want to become teachers to become teachers thank you thank you trustee Parrott uh, secretary treasurer green Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wondering if the mover of the motion would uh, consider um, changing it a little bit so that the, the part about the BCSTA writing a letter, I'm not sure you can actually ask the BCSTA to write a letter on, our, on their behalf. I think what might be better is a motion. The board actually adopts a motion tonight to refer this motion to the next BCP, BCSTA Provincial Council. And then that way they can consider it as an item that they could advocate for on behalf of the, all boards. Thank you, uh, Secretary Treasurer Green. Yes, I'm I'm supportive of that. Uh, whatever you know, okay. however so, it was worded. <laughs> so we would take that the BCTF, BCSTA be uh, be requested to write a similar letter. Take that out and do what David said. It would be a separate motion. Yes. Okay, so for this motion, um, if there's no objection from trustees, it's been done, but that line regarding the BCSDA will be removed. Is there any objection from trustees? Okay, seeing none, we will consider the motion as it shows on the screen. We have a mover, Trustee Parrott, a seconder, Trustee Gonzalez. If there's no additional discussion, we will move to the vote. Trustee Hansen. In support. Trustee Parrott. In support. Trustee Reddy. In support. Trustee Wong. In support. Trustee Ballantyne. In support. Trustee Chan Pedley. In support, thank you. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In support. And I am in support, so the motion passes unanimously. So Trustee Parrott, would you like to present the new motion? Yes, thank you. That this motion be sent to the to BCSTA Provincial Council. Secretary Treasurer, can you support Trustee Parrott with the wording? Uh, I think that the Board of Education um, just submits the this motion that you just adopted. Yeah. You know, we can word it again. Um, <clears throat> to the next um, BCSTA Provincial Council in the fall. Okay, thank you very much. So Trustee Parrott, if you'd like to read out the motion that you're moving, if you that, can. That this motion be sent to the next BCSTA Provincial Council in the fall. Perfect, thank you. So that is your motion on the floor. Is there a seconder? Trustee Gonzalez, and would you like to speak to it, Trustee Parrott? No, thank you. Okay, any other trustees to speak to the motion? Trustee Gonzalez. Uh, sorry, we're, we're now voting on the complete or just the, the amended? Just the bottom line is its own okay. separate motion that the VB, Vancouver Board of Education submits this motion to be sent to the BC, T, no, BC trustees. I think we've got some wording mixed up there. It's the, B, whoop. this motion be sent to the BCSTA. Next BCSTA Provincial Council meeting in the There fall. it is. There it is. Thank you. Okay, I'll just, just to add to that then, that this was something um, at advocacy, that was one of the topics that we had looked at possibly advocating for, and we decided to move forward with a couple of others, so that we know that this is an issue, um, just as it is with doctors and nurses, you know, that we need more of those as well, so yeah, I'm fully in support of this, thanks. 
Great, thank you. That's true. We did discuss this at advocacy. Any other trustees to speak to this motion? Okay, I am not seeing any, so we will move to the vote. Trustee Parrott. In favor. Trustee Reddy. In support. Trustee Wong. In favor. Trustee Ballantyne. In favor. Trustee Chan Pedley. In favor. Trustee Fraser. In support, thank you. Trustee Gonzalez. In support. Trustee Hansen. In support. And I am in support. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. Madam Chair, yes. I would like to work with uh, Trustee Parrott on a rationale for that BCSTA submission because it needs rationale. Perfect. Thank you for that support. That would be very helpful. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the public question period. So just give me one moment. I am being told that there are no questions submitted for a public question period. So on behalf of the board, before we adjourn, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, everybody in the Vancouver School District has worked incredibly hard. Our students, our families, our communities, our teachers, all of the staff have been absolutely unbelievable. This has been an incredibly challenging year, many, many ups and downs. Uh, and it was quite a journey, but thank you to everyone for your strength, your commitment to our students and our families. We look forward to a normal, more normal year next year and to seeing all of you in person. Thank you. If there is no opposition, we will adjourn by consensus. Seeing none, thank you everybody and have a wonderful evening.